Water heating is a thermodynamic process that uses an energy source to heat water above its initial temperature. Typical domestic uses of hot water include cooking, cleaning, bathing, and space heating. In industry, hot water and water heated to steam have many uses. Domestically, water is traditionally heated in vessels known as water heaters, kettles, cauldrons, pots, or coppers. These metal vessels that heat a batch of water do not produce a continual supply of heated water at a preset temperature. Rarely, hot water occurs naturally, usually from natural hot springs. The temperature varies based on the consumption rate, becoming cooler as flow increases. Appliances that provide a continual supply of hot water are called water heaters, hot water heaters, hot water tanks, boilers, heat exchangers, geysers, or calorifiers. These names depend on region, and whether they heat potable or non-potable water, are in domestic or industrial use, and their energy source. In domestic installations, potable water heated for uses other than space heating is also called domestic hot water. Fossil fuels, or solid fuels are commonly used for heating water. These may be consumed directly or may produce electricity that, in turn, heats water. Electricity to heat water may also come from any other electrical source, such as nuclear power or renewable energy. Alternative energy such as solar energy, heat pumps, hot water heat recycling, and geothermal heating can also heat water often in combination with backup systems powered by fossil fuels or electricity. Densely populated urban areas of some countries provide district heating of hot water. This is especially the case in Scandinavia and Finland. District heating systems supply energy for water heating and space heating from waste heat from industries, power plants, incinerators, geothermal heating, and central solar heating. Actual heating of tap water is performed in heat exchanges at the consumer's premises. Generally the consumer has no in-building backup system, due to the expected high availability of district heating systems. Types of water heating appliance Hot water used for space heating may be heated by fossil fuels in a boiler, while potable water may be heated in a separate appliance. This is common practice in the U.S., especially when warm air space heating is usually employed. Storage water heaters In household and commercial usage, most North American water heaters have traditionally been the tank type. Also called storage water heaters, these consist of a cylindrical vessel or container that keeps water continuously hot and ready to use. Typical sizes for household use range from 75 to 400 liters. These may use electricity, natural gas, propane, heating oil, solar, or other energy sources. Natural gas heaters are most popular in the U.S. and most European countries, since the gas is often conveniently piped throughout cities and towns and currently is the cheapest to use. Another popular arrangement where higher flow rates are required for limited periods is to heat water in a pressure vessel that can withstand a hydrostatic pressure close to that of the incoming main supply. In North America, these vessels are called hot water tanks, and may incorporate an electrical resistance heater, an air source heat pump, or a gas or oil burner that heats water directly. Where hot water space heating boilers are installed, DHW cylinders are usually heated indirectly by primary water from the boiler, or by an electric immersion heater. In the UK these vessels are called unvented cylinders. In the US, when connected to a boiler they are called indirect fired water heaters. Compared to tankless heaters, storage water heaters have the advantage of using energy at a relatively slow rate, storing the heat for later use. The disadvantage is that over time, the water inside the tank will cool down causing the heating system to activate to heat the water back up. Additionally, once the tank's supply of hot water has been exhausted, there is a significant delay before hot water is available again. Larger tanks tend to provide hot water with less temperature fluctuation at moderate flow rates. Volume storage water heaters in the United States and New Zealand are typically vertical, cylindrical tanks, usually standing on the floor or on a platform raised a short distance above the floor. Volume storage water heaters in Spain are typically horizontal. In India, they are mainly vertical. 
in apartments they can be mounted in the ceiling space over laundry utility rooms. In Australia, gas and electric outdoor tank heaters have mainly been used, but solar roof tanks are becoming fashionable. In temperate zone countries, where ambient temperature is seasonally colder, tiny point-of-use electric storage water heaters with capacities ranging from 8 to 32 litres are made for installation in kitchen and bath cabinets or on the wall above a sink. They typically use low-power heating elements, about 1 a kilowatt to 1.5 a kilowatt, and can provide hot water long enough for hand washing, or, if plumbed into an existing hot water line, until hot water arrives from a remote high-capacity water heater. They may be used when retrofitting a pump and recirculating plumbing in a building is too costly or impractical. Since they maintain water temperature thermostatically, they can only supply a continuous flow of hot water at extremely low flow rates, unlike high-capacity tankless heaters. In tropical countries, like Singapore and India, a storage water heater may vary from 10 L to 35 L. Smaller water heaters are sufficient, as ambient weather temperatures and incoming water temperature are moderate. Tankless heaters. Tankless water heater Tasa Euro also called instantaneous, continuous flow, in line, flash, on demand, or instant on water heater Tasa Euro are gaining in popularity. These high power water heaters instantly heat water as it flows through the device, and do not retain any water internally except for what is in the heat exchanger coil. Copper heat exchangers are preferred in these units because of their high thermal conductivity and ease of fabrication. Tankless heaters may be installed throughout a household at more than one point of use, far from a central water heater, or larger centralized models may still be used to provide all the hot water requirements for an entire house. The main advantages of tankless water heaters are a plentiful continuous flow of hot water, and potential energy savings under some conditions. Standalone appliances for quickly heating water for DHW are known in North America as tankless or on-demand water heaters. In some places, they're called multipoint heaters, geysers or ascots. In Australia and New Zealand they are called instantaneous hot water units. In Argentina they are called kalefones. In that country kalefones use gas instead of electricity. A similar wood-fired appliance was known as the chip heater. A common arrangement where hot water space heating is employed, is for a boiler to also heat potable water, providing a continuous supply of DHW without extra equipment. Appliances that can supply both space heating and DHW are called combination boilers. Though on-demand heaters provide a continuous supply of DHW, the rate they can produce it, it is limited by the thermodynamics of heating water from the available fuel supplies. Electric shower heads. As the name implies, an electric heating element is incorporated into such shower heads to instantly heat the water as it flows through. These self heating shower heads are specialized point of use tankless water heaters, and are widely used in some countries. Invented in Brazil in the 1930s and used frequently since the 40s, the electric shower is a home appliance often seen in South American countries due to the higher costs with gas distribution. Earlier models were made of chromed copper or brass, which were expensive, but since 1970, units made of injected plastics are popular due to low prices similar to that of a hairdryer. Electric showers have a simple electric system, working like a coffee maker, but with a larger water flow. A flow switch turns on the device when water flows through it. Once the water is stopped, the device turns off automatically. An ordinary electric shower often has three heat settings, low, high or cold to use when a central heater system is available or in hot seasons. Energy usage, the power consumption of electric showers in the maximum heating setting is about 5.5 a kilowatt for 120 AV and 7.5 a kilowatt for 220 AV. The lower costs with electric showers compared to the higher costs with boilers is due to the time of use. An electric shower uses energy only during the water flow, while a boiler works many times a day to keep a quantity of standing water hot for use throughout the day and night. So electric showers may save energy compared to gas central heaters. A 20-minute bath by an electric shower can cost about 10 cents, but the same bath using water from a gas heater can cost three times as much. 
This difference can be larger where the electricity is cheaper than the gas supply, or in tropical countries where the maximum power consumption is required only during the cold seasons. Safety There is a wide range of electric showers all with various amounts of heating controls. The heating element of an electric shower is made from a coil made of nickel or an alloy of nickel and chromium or can even be made of sheathed heater element, like the ones used in oil heaters, radiators or ions, they provide more safety as there is insulation between the electric parts and the water. Due to electrical safety standards, modern electric showers are made of plastic instead of using metallic casings like in the past. As an electrical appliance that uses more electrical current than a washer or a dryer machine, an electric shower installation requires careful planning, and must be wired directly from the electrical distribution box with its own circuit breaker and ground system. A poorly installed system with old aluminum wires or bad connections may be dangerous, as the wires can overheat. Some changes in electrical distribution utilities were required before widespread use of electric showers could become practical. Electric utility transformers with higher KVA capacity are required due to increase of peak electrical demand. In countries where almost all houses use electric showers like Brazil, an ordinary street transformer per square has 112.5 to 150 a kVA of capacity, and buildings must have their own transformers to support the electrical domestic demand without overloads in the electric distribution. Solar water heaters Increasingly, solar-powered water heaters are being used. Their solar collectors are installed outside dwellings, typically on the roof or walls or nearby and the potable hot water storage tank is typically a pre-existing or new conventional water heater, or a water heater specifically designed for solar thermal. The most basic solar thermal models are the direct gain type, in which the potable water is directly sent into the collector. Many such systems are said to use integrated collector storage, as direct gain systems typically have storage integrated within the collector. Heating water directly is inherently more efficient than heating it indirectly via heat exchangers, but such systems offer very limited freeze protection, can easily heat water to temperatures unsafe for domestic use, and ICS systems suffer from severe heat loss on cold nights and cold, cloudy days. By contrast, indirect or closed-loop systems do not allow potable water through the panels, but rather pump a heat transfer fluid through the panels. After collecting heat in the panels, the heat transfer fluid flows through a heat exchanger, transferring its heat to the potable hot water. When the panels are cooler than the storage tank or when the storage tank has already reached its maximum temperature, the controller in closed loop systems will stop the circulation pumps. In a drain back system, the water drains into a storage tank contained in conditioned or semi conditioned space, protected from freezing temperatures. With antifreeze systems, however, the pump must be run if the panel temperature gets too hot or too cold. Flat panel collectors are typically used in closed loop systems. Flat panels, which often resemble skylights, are the most durable type of collector, and they also have the best performance for systems designed for temperatures within 100 AA degree Fahrenheit of ambient temperature. Flat panels are regularly used in both pure water and antifreeze systems. Another type of solar collector is the evacuated tube collector, which are intended for cold climates that do not experience severe hail and or applications where high temperatures are needed. Placed in a rack, evacuated tube collectors form a row of glass tubes, each containing absorption fins attached to a central heat conducting rod. The evacuated description refers to the vacuum created in the glass tubes during the manufacturing process which results in very low heat loss and lets evacuated tube systems achieve extreme temperatures, far in excess of water's boiling point. Geothermal heating, in countries like Iceland and New Zealand, and other volcanic regions, water heating may be done using geothermal heating, rather than combustion. Gravity-fed system, where a space heating water boiler is employed, the traditional arrangement in the UK is to use boiler heated water to heat potable water contained in a cylindrical vessel a euro, which is supplied from a cold water storage vessel or container, usually in the roof space of the building. This produces a fairly steady supply of DHW with low static pressure head but usually with a good flow. 
In most other parts of the world, water heating appliances do not use a cold water storage vessel or container, but heat water at pressures close to that of the incoming mains water supply. Point of use versus centralized hot water A locational design decision may be made between point of use and centralized hot water heaters. Centralized water heaters are more traditional, and are still a good choice for small buildings. For larger buildings with intermittent or occasional hot water use, multiple PLU water heaters may be a better choice, since they can reduce long waits for hot water to arrive from a remote heater. The decision where to locate the water heater, S, is only partially independent of the decision of a tanked versus tankless water heater, or the choice of energy source for the heat. Other improvements Other improvements include check valve devices at their inlet and outlet, cycle timers, electronic ignition in the case of fuel using models, sealed air intake systems in the case of fuel using models, and pipe insulation. The sealed air intake system types are sometimes called band joist intake units. High efficiency condensing units can convert up to 98% of the energy in the fuel to heating the water. The exhaust gases of combustion are cooled and are mechanically ventilated either through the roof or through an exterior wall. At high combustion efficiencies a drain must be supplied to handle the water condensed out of the combustion products, which are primarily carbon dioxide and water vapour. In traditional plumbing in the UK, the space heating boiler is set up to heat a separate hot water cylinder or water heater for potable hot water. Such water heaters are often fitted with an auxiliary electrical immersion heater for use if the boiler is out of action for a time. Heat from the space heating boiler is transferred to the water heater vessel container by means of a heat exchanger, and the boiler operates at a higher temperature than the potable hot water supply. Most potable water heaters in North America are completely separate from the space heating units, due to the popularity of HVAC forced air systems in North America. Residential combustion water heaters manufactured since 2003 in the United States have been redesigned to resist ignition of flammable vapors and incorporate a thermal cutoff switch, per ANSIZ 21.10.1. The first feature attempts to prevent vapors from flammable liquids and gases in the vicinity of the heater from being ignited and thus causing a house fire or explosion. The second feature prevents tank overheating due to unusual combustion conditions. These safety requirements were made based on homeowners storing, or spilling, gasoline or other flammable liquids near their water heaters and causing fires. Since most of the new designs incorporate some type of flame arrestor screen, they require monitoring to make sure they don't become clogged with lint or dust, reducing the availability of air for combustion. If the flame arrestor becomes clogged, the thermal cutoff may act to shut down the heater. A wet back stove, wet back heater, or back boiler, is a simple household secondary water heater using incidental heat. It typically consists of a hot water pipe running behind a fireplace or stove, and has no facility to limit the heating. Modern wet backs may run the pipe in a more sophisticated design to assist heat exchange. These designs are being forced out by government efficiency regulations that do not count the energy used to heat water as efficiently used. History Though not very popular in North America, another type of water heater developed in Europe predated the storage model. In London, England, in 1868, a painter named Benjamin Waddy Morn invented the first instantaneous domestic water heater that didn't use solid fuel. Named the geyser after an Icelandic gushing hot spring, Morn's invention made cold water at the top flow through pipes that were heated by hot gases from a burner at the bottom. Hot water then flowed into a sink or tub. The invention was somewhat dangerous because there was no flue to remove heated gases from the bathroom. A water heater is still sometimes called a geyser in the UK. The terms electric water boiler, Electric dispensing pot or electric water urn are also commonly used there. Morn's invention influenced the work of a Norwegian mechanical engineer named Edwin Rood. The first automatic, storage tank type gas water was invented around 1889 by Rood after he immigrated to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Rood Manufacturing Company, still in existence today, made many advancements in tank type and tankless water heater design and operation. Thermodynamics and Economics 
water typically enters residences in the U.S. at about 10 AA degrees Celsius, depending on latitude and season. Hot water temperatures of 40 a Euro 49 AA degrees Celsius are usual for dishwashing, laundry and showering, which requires that the heater raise the water temperature about 30 AA degrees Celsius if the hot water is mixed with cold water at the point of use. The Uniform Plumbing Code reference shower flow rate is 2.5 US gallons per minute. Sink and dishwasher usages range from 1 Euro 3 US gallons per minute. Natural gas in the U.S. is measured in CCF, which is converted to a standardized heat content unit called the therm, equal to 100,000 British thermal units. A British thermal unit is the energy required to raise one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. A U.S. gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds. So, to raise a 40-gallon tank of 55 AA degree Fahrenheit water up to 105 AA degree Fahrenheit would require 40 A. 8.3 A equals 16,600 British thermal units, or approximately 0 0.166 A CCF, 16,600-100,000, at 100% efficiency. A 40,000 A British thermal unit per hour heater would take 25 minutes to do this, at 100% efficiency. At $1 per therm, the cost of the gas would be about 17 cents. In comparison, a typical electric water heater has a 4500 watt heating element, which if 100% efficient results in a heating time of about 1.1 hours. Since 16,600 a British thermal unit is roughly 4.9 a kilowatt hour, at 10 cents per kilowatt hour the electricity would cost 49 cents. Operating a shower at 2.5 a GPM and 104 AA degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to operating a 19.8 a kilowatt appliance, REF. W computes 13.2 a kilowatt, but that is for 20 degree Celsius increase instead of 30. In the UK, domestic electric immersion heaters are usually rated at 3 kilowatts. Energy efficiencies of water heaters in residential use can vary greatly particularly based on manufacturer and model. However, electric heaters tend to be slightly more efficient with recovery efficiency reaching about 98%. Gas-fired heaters have maximum recovery efficiencies of only about 86%. Overall energy factors can be as low as 80% for electric and 50% for gas systems. Natural gas and propane tank water heaters with energy factors of 62% or greater as well as electric tank water heaters with energy factors of 93% or greater, are considered high efficiency units. Energy Star qualified natural gas and propane tank water heaters have energy factors of 67% or higher, which is usually achieved using an automatic flue damper or power venting. Direct electric resistance tank water heaters are not included in the Energy Star program, however, the Energy Star program does include electric heat pump units with energy factors of 200% or higher. Tankless gas water heaters must have an energy factor of 82% or higher for Energy Star qualification. Since electricity production itself today has efficiency levels ranging from only 15% to slightly over 55%, with around 40% typical for thermal power stations, Direct resistance electric water heating is typically the least energy efficient option. However, use of a heat pump can make electric water heaters much more energy efficient and lead to a decrease in carbon dioxide emissions, even more so if a renewable source of electricity is used. A tankless water heater operating at those same power levels would be able to supply 1.6 a GPM continuously, raising the temperature by 30 AA degrees Celsius. The same unit could supply 1.3 a GPM while raising the temperature by 33 AA degrees Celsius. To handle a full house load of multiple users with a centralized tankless water heater requires three to four times this power level a euro somewhat difficult to achieve with natural gas, and difficult to achieve with electricity. Many tankless water heaters can use over 100,000 a British thermal unit per hour during high flow, and so require especially large power supplies. Unfortunately, it takes a great deal of energy to heat water, as one may experience when waiting to boil a gallon of water on a stove. For this reason, tankless on-demand water heaters require a powerful energy source. 
a standard 15 ampere rated wall electric outlet, by comparison, only sources enough power to warm a disappointingly small amount of water, about 0.17 a GPM at 40 AA degree Celsius temperature elevation. U.S. minimum requirements, in 2015, new minimum standards for efficiency of residential water heaters set by the United States Department of Energy will go into effect. All new gas storage tank water heaters with capacities smaller than 55 U.S. gallons sold in the United States in 2015 or later shall have an energy factor of at least 60 percent, increased from the current minimum standard of 58 percent energy factor for 50 U.S. gallon gas units. Electric storage tank water heaters with capacities less than 55 U.S. gallons sold in the United States shall have an energy factor of at least 95 percent increased from the current minimum standard of 90% for 50 U.S. gallon electric units. Under the 2015 standard, for the first time, storage water heaters with capacities of 55 U.S. gallons or larger will face stricter efficiency requirements than those of 50 U.S. gallons or less. Under the current standard, a typical 75 U.S. gallon gas storage water heater can have an energy factor as low as 53% while under the 2015 standard, the minimum energy factor for a 75 U.S. gallon gas storage tank water heater will be 74 percent, which can only be achieved by using condensing technology. An 80 U.S. gallon electric storage tank water heater can have a minimum energy factor of 86 percent under the current standard, while under the 2015 standard, the minimum energy factor for an 80 gallon electric storage tank water heater will be 97 percent which is only possible with heat pump technology. Gas tankless water heaters shall have an energy factor of 82% or greater under the 2015 standards, which corresponds to the current Energy Star standard. Water heater safety, explosion hazard. Water heaters potentially can explode and cause significant damage, injury, or death if certain safety devices are not installed. A safety device called a temperature and pressure relief valve is normally fitted on the top of the water heater to dump water if the temperature or pressure becomes too high. Most plumbing codes require that a discharge pipe be connected to the valve to direct the flow of discharged hot water to a drain, typically a nearby floor drain, or outside the living space. Some building codes will allow for the discharge pipe to terminate in the garage. If a gas or propane-fired water heater is installed in a garage or basement, Many plumbing codes require that it be elevated at least 18 and above the floor to reduce the potential for fire or explosion due to spillage or leakage of combustible liquids in the garage. Furthermore, certain local codes mandate that tank type heaters and new and retrofit installations must be secured to an adjacent wall by a strap or anchor to prevent tipping over and breaking the water and gas pipes in the event of an earthquake. For older houses where the water heater is part of the space heating boiler, and plumbing codes allow, some plumbers will install an automatic gas shutoff in addition to a TPR valve. When the device senses that the temperature reaches 99 AA degrees Celsius, it will shut off the gas supply and prevent further heating. In addition, an expansion tank or exterior pressure relief valve must be installed to prevent pressure buildup in the plumbing from rupturing pipes, valves, or the water heater. Thermal burns Scalding is a serious concern with any water heater. Human skin burns quickly at high temperature, in less than 5 seconds at 60 AA degrees Celsius, but much slower at 53 AA degrees Celsius a euro it takes a full minute for a second degree burn. Older people and children often receive serious scalds due to disabilities or slow reaction times. In the United States and elsewhere it is common practice to put a tempering valve on the outlet of the water heater. The result of mixing hot and cold water via a tempering valve is referred to as tempered water. A tempering valve mixes enough cold water with the hot water from the heater to keep the outgoing water temperature fixed at a more moderate temperature, often set to 50 AA degrees Celsius. Without a tempering valve, reduction of the water heater's set point temperature is the most direct way to reduce scalding. However, for sanitation, Hot water is needed at a temperature that can cause scalding. This may be accomplished by using a supplemental heater in an appliance that requires hotter water. Most residential dishwashing machines, 
for example, include an internal electric heating element for increasing the water temperature above that provided by a domestic hot water heater. Bacterial contamination. Two conflicting safety issues affect water heater temperature a euro the risk of scalding from excessively hot water greater than 55 AA degrees Celsius, and the risk of incubating bacteria colonies, particularly Legionella, in water that is not hot enough to kill them. Both risks are potentially life-threatening and are balanced by setting the water heater's thermostat to 55 AA degrees Celsius. The European Guidelines for Control and Prevention of Travel Associated Legiona Razor Euro Unregistered Trademark Disease recommend that hot water should be stored at 60 AA degrees Celsius and distributed such that a temperature of at least 50 AA degrees Celsius and preferably 55 AA degrees Celsius is achieved within one minute at points of use. If there is a dishwasher without a booster heater, it may require a water temperature within a range of 57 a Euro 60 AA degrees Celsius for optimum cleaning, but tempering valves set to no more than 55 AA degrees Celsius can be applied to faucets to avoid scalding. Tank temperatures above 60 AA degrees Celsius may produce limescale deposits, which could later harbor bacteria, in the water tank. Temperatures above 60 AA degrees Celsius may also cause gradual erosion of glassware in a dishwasher. Tank thermostats are not a reliable guide to the internal temperature of the tank. Gas-fired water tanks may have no temperature calibration shown. An electric thermostat shows the temperature at the elevation of the thermostat, but water lower in the tank can be considerably cooler. An outlet thermometer is a better indication of water temperature. In the renewable energy industry the conflict between daily thermal legionella control and high temperatures, which may drop system performance, is subject to heated debate. In a paper seeking a green exemption from normal legionellosis safety standards, Europe's top CEN Solar Thermal Technical Committee TC312 asserts that a 50% fall in performance would occur if solar water heating systems were heated to the base daily. However some solar simulator analysis work using PolySun 5 suggests that an 11% energy penalty is a more likely figure. Whatever the context, both energy efficiency and scalding safety requirements push in the direction of considerably lower water temperatures than the Legionella pasteurization temperature of around 60 AA degrees Celsius. However, Legionella can be safely and easily controlled with good design and engineering protocols. For instance raising the temperature of water heaters once a day or even once every few days to 55 AA degrees Celsius at the coldest part of the water heater for 30 minutes will effectively control Legionella. In all cases and in particular energy efficient applications, Legionnaire's disease is more often than not the result of engineering design issues that do not take into consideration the impact of stratification or low flow. See also, Equostat architectural engineering, condensing boiler, electric water boiler, energy conservation, heat traps, hot water heat recycling, solar hot water, thermal immersion circulator, references. External links, how it works, water heater from popular mechanics.